Hi everybody. Welcome to another Carrie Wright Silk Coffee Break. Everything that you are going to see today is available for sale on my website, carriewrightsilk.com. At least at the time of the shooting of this video, everything is for sale on my website. As you know, all of my pieces are one of a kind handmade items. The first thing I'm gonna show you is a really easy way to add a little pop on your wrist. So let me start with just this great little 17 inch bossa nova bandana. And this is technically a pocket square size when it's a 17 inch. With all of the square scarves, most of the ties that you do, they're gonna start by folding something into a triangle. That's going to make it as long as it can possibly be if you remember your geometry lesson. <laughs> and then you're gonna fold it in half, and then just start rolling it up from the long end to the short end. And there are a lot of different ways to do this. You don't have to do it exactly like I'm doing it. But the point being, you're trying to get a long tube out of the triangle. Now the trick to tying it around your wrist is to be comfortable with, just let it drape, pull one end up, and you've got to get comfortable with holding it in your hand like this. Do you see what I'm doing? And then I'm going to wrap the other end around underneath my wrist up to the top. And I'm going to exchange which end I'm holding. So the end that I just wrapped around, I'm going to stick between my front two fingers just so that I can hold on to it. And I'm going to take that floppy end that I had a hold of before the opposite direction and bring it up around behind and loop it around into a knot and it kind of helps if you let go of the one end and then grab it again so that you can tighten it and I'm just pulling back so that I can get that knot tightened and then I'm, I'm going to make another knot so I'm going to exchange ends again and loop that around and tie a little knot. And now I have a nice little knot at my wrist and I just created a wristlet out of my little 17 inch bandana. And you can do this with any size. The 22 inch works really great for this. The only difference is gonna be how large your wrist is. I have kind of large wrists, so I like the the 22 inch if I want a little more flare. And of course, you're gonna wanna take this off if you're gonna go eat hot wings. With your little scarf, you're gonna do what's called a lark's head knot and just put the loop around the handle of your bag and pull the ends back through. And then you make the decision which side you want it on based on where this knot falls. I think I would, on my bag, I would use it on this side because I like the way that looks. And just work it down. The 17 inch is a great size for these types of bags simply because the scarf isn't going to touch the ground when you set the bag down on the floor or on the table and that's important to me. Um, I don't carry a super huge bag. If you have a larger bag or if you want that extra flair and you're willing to be careful so that when you set your bag down, one of the things you do is just loop it around so that it doesn't fall down onto the ground, then you're gonna be fine. Let's get into kind of a fun way that you've probably never heard of before. Here is a 22 inch Bossa Nova bandana. And all of you probably know how to roll up a square so that you can wear it around your neck or to put it in a triangle and tie it around your neck, cowboy style. That's very popular. Everyone probably knows how to do that, so I'm not gonna show you that. One thing that you might not realize is that you can take a square like this and from the two square corners without making it a triangle, you can tie these little ends behind your neck, and I'm gonna to try to do it without pulling my hair. I usually have my hair up when I do this. 
and I'm just tying a really tiny little knot in the two ends and now it's around my neck and what I want to show you with this is how nicely it drapes just like a blouse does this is a great cheat for your outfit you guys you're gonna put your jacket on I'll show you with my cardigan you're gonna put your jacket on over your scarf like this and once it's buttoned up you just have this lovely wonderful color up around your neck and now all of your scarves that are square at least and some of the wider oblong scarves you can do this with as well you just got a whole new wardrobe you really can turn your little square scarf into a blouse basically it's a great way to have something really interesting going on under what might have otherwise been a little bit of a boring outfit the next thing I want to show you with the 22 inch um, and I'll show you with one that has more of a border on it like this one a lot of square scarves usually do sport some kind of a border and one of the ways to show off that border that you might not realize is that when you start rolling it up you'll see if I start with the square and I roll from the center to the outside like this kind of hard to do midair but you get the idea I just wanted to show you how that border wraps around the ends and creates a really neat effect and that's true for any square scarf that has a border the difference being if I take this from the corner of the triangle the short corner and I wrap the other direction so that the hypotenuse do you remember your geometry so that the hypotenuse of the triangle is what ends up on the outside you can see that now it's a whole new look that wrap of the border is not there so that's going to significantly impact what this looks like after it's tied around your neck um, with these little squares one of the things I really like to do with them is to just throw it around the neck super easy into a double knot I think that's so cute and it's so flirty super fun for summer this is the Ode to Indiana scarf, and this comes in three different sizes on my website. This is the largest, this is a 34 inch. And what I'm gonna show you next with this larger scarf, everyone's, she's been all the rage. You Ladies, you probably are gonna guess whose name I'm gonna say next who's very famous for her scarves right now. That's right, Dr. Burks. <laughs> I'm gonna show you how I think she's probably tying her scarves. She has a lot of fabric around her neck. I'm guessing that she's wearing the 34 inch or 90 centimeters. It's a pretty standard European size for fine art scarves. This 34 inches you are gonna fold into a triangle. And the trick with this is to throw this over your shoulder so that the triangle is somewhat toward the back. And let me just, sorry about that. Let me just put the camera down a little bit so you can see. And when I bring this side around, the whole point is how this is going to get tied. So I have a longer end on this side than I do on my right side here so that I can drape and bring this up and tie it up here on the side, not all the way down at the end. So I'm bringing around, the long end comes around the top of the short end and underneath. So now I have one loop and it's about to become a knot and then I'm going to bring that back over the top, let it just fall back over the top. I'm going to bring the short end up so that I can keep wrapping this longer end around underneath it and pulling the long end back up. And now I actually have a knot here. That's just a double knot that I just tied. The point being, I tied it very, very loosely 
so that I have these nice long ends. I've been very mindful to keep the border wrapping around in a tidy way. I've got the border wrapping around the end of the tie so that the ends look very, very clean, very nice. And then we're just gonna turn this scarf and let it drape over the shoulder so that it's just a little bit bigger around the neck here. Do I look like Dr. Burks yet? <laughs> and I'm gonna pull one end over the shoulder. You can also let it hang down. You can let that be anywhere you want. I see her often wearing it over her shoulder, but you can let it just loosely hang here. And then with these little ends, you can either leave it just like this, or you can go ahead and just tuck it under if you want a softer look. It's all about whatever you want to have showing on the scarf. And because this isn't right up against my neck, as you wear this throughout the day, it really will stay put. From here, if you wanted, you could just tighten that knot up a bit, move it to the back. You can go ahead and button up and have this very, very classy look. Gives you a little bit of color and a little bit of flash. I wanted to very quickly, before I show you another tie, I wanna show you the difference in silks. So this is the bird, the Love Bird scarf. This is a batik. This is painted on a fabric called flat crepe. And I want you to see how much drape it has and how thin it can be. How I can make it very, very small in spite of the fact that it's a 34 inch scarf. And this is a silk satin. They're the same size. This is much spongier and this is much drapier. And that's one of the things to keep in mind when you're going to tie a scarf for a, a specific purpose. Just think about how you wanna be wearing it because heavier fabrics are not going to want to get super small. So if you're trying to get a more conservative tie and you don't want a lot of bulk around the neck, probably better to stick with the flat crepe because it will stay very, very small if you want it to. And if you want something more like that Dr. Burke's look, then something a little heavier like a twill or a satin will give you a little bit more fluff and a little bit more fullness. So that's just one little hint. This is 34 inches. I'm on the square. I have not folded it in a diagonal. I'm gonna fold two corners. So I'm folding the two corners just a little knot like this. And then it's basically in half and I'm gonna come to the other end and I'm gonna fold those two, or excuse me, put a knot in these two corners. Now I have this sort of bag looking thing. This can become, these are like armholes and this can become an instant cover up or little bit of color it will drape so nicely on your back and it's a nice way if you're looking for a way to wear something like a shawl over an evening dress rather than having it wrapped around your arms and kind of fiddling with it all night and trying to keep it up around your arms a square is perfect for that and then one more thing I wanna show you. I'm gonna go ahead and tie this satin scarf, put it in a triangle, fold the triangle in on itself. So I'm trying to get this into a rectangle that's very, very tidy. I'm just gonna start rolling it up like this. And I'm gonna tie this like a men's tie. One side over the other, pulling it around over the top, and then back down through the loop. I think this is technically what a half Windsor knot is. I have my reasons for doing this. It does look somewhat like a men's tie until you get down here to the ends and you can see 
how cute this is hanging down. And the reason I'm showing you this is because you might have on a, a crisp white shirt and you feel like you want something but you don't necessarily want to wear one of those long necklaces. You want something that's just a little bit more dressy. It's a very classy way to go. And the knot is tidy. You haven't just tied it in a double knot and left it to hang. This is just a really nice, tidy, clean knot to have in your scarf. And then you can also, if you want, pull this up to the neck again. It just looks a little bit cleaner up at your neck. And again, it's all just preference. There's no wrong way to tie a scarf or to tie a tie. I think you really just have to play with it get comfortable with it in front of the mirror, go slow, be willing to take your time like I am and kind of fluff it out and mess with it in the mirror. Make sure you get it right where you want it and the more you practice, the more you're gonna get comfortable with lots of different ways to tie it and you won't feel quite so intimidated by all those scarves laying around in your drawer that you never find a use for. You can always find a use for a scarf, I think. Something that I think is really super cute and I'm just gonna use this Gerber Daisy scarf. I'm gonna fold this in half into a triangle like this. And I'm gonna start working from the corner to the hypotenuse, rolling this up, and I'm gonna tie a bow tie. This is very, very cute. So, two ends. I'm gonna pull my left hand, I, I work left to right, you might work right to left. One end needs to be longer than the other. I'm gonna pull the long end over the short end and you see that it's, it's a good bit longer. Long end over the short end, up and through. And I'm gonna switch hands, okay? And here's where it gets tricky with a bow tie. This long end is what's gonna create the loop on the front. So I'm gonna take the short end that's underneath, fold it in half like this, and now I'm holding it. So you see that there's a loop? I'm holding it here. I'm taking the long end around underneath that bow, and I'm sliding it through the back. I'm pushing it through with my finger to create a little loop, like there's a loop here. And then I'm just gently pulling it tight. And I'm gonna tighten it up here. Can't really see very well. Oh, sorry, kicked the camera. Okay. And then while you're in the mirror, you're just gonna fluff out these ends to make it a little bit more girly. Okay, there that is. What do you think? <laughs> Here's my little bow tie. That's the last little thing I have to show you. So again, you can wear it with a little crisp white shirt. You can wear it in the front as a bow tie if you wanna to button something up to your neck and you just wanna be really super cute, please make sure to like and subscribe on my YouTube channel at Carrie Wright Silk. And do leave comments, I love hearing from you. And if there are special topics that you'd like me to cover, make sure that you ask. Thanks so much for being here, you guys. Remember, there's always a reason to have hope. See you soon, bye.